how did you get into opera? Uh, so I apparently told my stepmother at six years old that when I grew up, I want to be a movie star. Oh. And she told me this a few years ago. I was like, really? I, okay, sure. Um, I guess it basically it started when growing up, uh, my dad and I would watch a lot of action movies. And I realized that either you're going to be a cop or you're going to be in the military, you're going to do one of those things, but you can't do all of them. But I want to do all of them. So how do I do all of them? Well, maybe I just make damn movies then. So that was kind of uh, how it came into play. And then I got blessed with a Christmas gift one year um, to be a part of a little theater. So I did that. And then uh, we moved to Stratford, uh, my family. And I was in a school play and a friend's dad saw me. He's like, hey, you should audition for a TV show that I'm writing for. I got blessed again and I, got, I booked the part. So... I was like, holy shit, this is doable. Let's let's keep going. And uh, here we are 25 years later, something like that. Wow. Yeah. That's amazing. I love these stories. So do you have a preference? You've done film, you've done television, you've done uh, stage. Do you have a preference? Uh, so it used to be that I enjoyed film. And that was because generally there's a little more... Uh, a little more budget to have fun with on a, on a feature film, and that makes you know the day to day a lot easier and fun, and the commitment is is a lot shorter, right? So if not everybody's all sunshine and rainbows when you're working together, there's some assholes, and you're like, oh, it's only six weeks. I can do six weeks. Okay, fine. I can avoid you for six weeks, not six years on a TV series, right? Um, but as I get older, the idea of having a regular job would have been awesome. So now I'm just like, yeah, no, I'll take, I'll take a TV job. That's, that's fine. It's, uh, right? it, it comes down to the people you get to work with, right? And sometimes I find in television, because the schedules are so demanding, that everybody's still exhausted. They're tired. They're miserable. I'm making this money, but I don't get to spend it because I'm here busy working. And I don't even get to watch the show, right? Um, so generally with film, it's... We know what the time frame is shorter. People will still take time and enjoy their lives. So the day-to-day -day operations of, of working in film is usually doing it nicer. It's been so long since I've done stage that it, it, I can watch rock stars and, and new musicians sit there in a, in a stadium full of people and you're like, I can see how addicting that feeling is and I don't know how you ever get that back unless you're just on stage, right? And so... I get how it becomes sort of an addiction for that, um, but I, uh, I'm not there. Not I don't have cheering crowds of people <laughs> for me. That's not. That's... Well, you've played many different characters as we have. Do you have a favorite character that you played? Well, um, I really enjoyed uh, Albert Wesker. You know, um, it's only because I, I grew up playing the, the video games, like I'm sure a lot of us have. Mm -hmm. Um, and when the opportunity came in for, to, to, to film in Toronto, it was at a point when I had already heard all the rumors of how amazing Mila Jovovich is. And, you know, the, the, the three other films had already filmed, uh, both in Toronto and I, I guess we did one in, in Vegas, that, that one. Yeah. Uh, but anyway, um, yeah, it was, it was something that had, uh, this whole energy behind it you're like i get to be a part of that that's amazing so <laughs> you know you kind of hope that that's we we keep showing up and, and trying each gig is going to be the one right and maybe this is going to bring me the success that you think that every other actor has like the phone's always ringing but it doesn't happen that's not the case yeah. you just you take one job you enjoy it you're grateful for it and you look for the next one so how did you prepare for that role by reading my lines and showing up and hitting the mark, don't bounce the furniture. Um, there, uh, there was some um, for the first afterlife with the, uh, for example, in the action scene where we're doing um, the big backflip and stuff like that. So um, me and my stunt double, we went and rented a gymnastics gym just to try and get the idea of doing the bouncing and doing the backflipping. He obviously was much better than I was at it. Um, but yeah, I mean, other than that, and sort of uh, training, weight training, and you know, staying limber, and you know, doing some stretches. Do you weight train? Like, no. No, I don't. I didn't think so. It's, it's cheaper than therapy. It's just, it's amazing. You played a really horrible character on Degrassi that I loved. I loved how realistic it was, and I wonder how it was playing that type of character. 
Uh, well, for those of you that don't know, um, basically the character that I played forced himself uh, on Paige, one of, the, yeah. one of the actresses on the show. Um, it's difficult, you know, I mean, this was before we started getting into this hypersensitiveness of, of, of society. So it was, okay, you know, I respect you, and you respect me, and we're, we're going to do this, and if you're uncomfortable, obviously say something, but this is kind of how it's going to go, and you just, you, I, mean, I apologize, you, you can only be so sorry for what you have to do, but you do realize that this is a gig, it's not real, and we're all safe here, and um, I was blessed to have, uh, to, to, to work with uh, Lauren, because she was easygoing, and, and you know, not a high maintenance actress like sometimes they can be. Oh, I believe that. <laughs> you know, and then it's understandable because it's awkward. Nobody likes that, and it's one of the most terrible acts that people can do. So I get it, and it's uh, it's not the first time I've had to do it as a character. And you're just like, oh, I always get to be the bad guy. Great, awesome. Someone told me though, when whenever you play the bad guy, like that's the most memorable character. They, people remember the bad guy. The bad guys are more right? fun. Yeah, because yeah. yeah. the lead has to do all the right things. The bad guy's like, no. Well, you know, I just watched uh, the latest um, Venom movie. Yeah. And yeah. like, yeah, he's probably my favorite superhero because he's just like, fuck it. <laughs> That's true. That's now, true. is there a kind of character that you have to play that you'd like to play or somebody that you'd like to play? Well, if this gets on the internet, <sighs> well, just, <more>. just Cause <laughs> is coming up. And I would love to play Rico, even though I mean, really, I can't. But still, like, a. To, Play an action hero of that level yeah. of, you know, yeah, that's what I want to do. I want to kick ass and blow shit up, all right? Do you have um, a passion for behind the scenes? Would you like to do directing or producing or, like, is there something you'd be interested in? Well, after doing this for 25 years, um, I do, I have a greater sense of the different jobs and their responsibilities on a film set. And I like efficiencies. So I have gotten to a point where I realize that as an actor, you can't really prod somebody to be like, hey, can you wrap those cables up a little quicker? But if you're a producer, you can actually say that. And you're like, yeah, that's valid. Come on, fuck. Let's not talk about the sushi from lunch last week. Let's get this done. Um, so yeah, I think uh, producing is kind of the, the, the direction that we go. Um, but sure, I'm open to some other jobs. What do you got? I'm going to turn it to the audience because I know there are questions and I know... Okay, so when you do really serious films, a lot of times, sometimes it makes the atmosphere really tense. Did you guys on any of your film sets, specifically, um, do you guys ever do anything comedic afterwards to lighten the mood? Was there ever a joke that you guys have on filming to bring it back to like? You know, there are only sometimes on certain films because you can get away with it because everybody, a lot of times, the 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 heads are worried about how much money we're spending every minute that we're all there, right? So I don't want to be the asshole who's wasting time. But there is a time when you can make thing, make light of things. And, uh, you know, sure, in our last movie, Last of the Night, um, we're dealing with a uh, uh, child being um, essentially abducted underneath my nose by killers, you know, and to try and make things a little lighter, well, I think... Um, an upset stomach and the, maybe a little flatulence had something to do with it. But occasionally you're just like, you know what? We're just getting, it's three o'clock in the morning. We're all tired. I'm gonna let it fly. And uh, so that was that was fun a couple of times. And you know, it's not for everybody, obviously. Or was it like uh, on Legend of Tomorrow? Uh, again, when, uh, just to reference the idea of working on a television show. Um, so the CW, it, uh, Legends of Tomorrow films in Vancouver, um, like a lot of CW shows, they typically will start their Monday at 7 a.m. and by Friday, our start times are usually like 5 p.m. So that leads into a Saturday that is still being occupied for your show. So this is a six day week and these people are doing it day after day, week after week. So it's no longer a fun gig, it's a fucking job. So, you know, it was nice because I got to have a fun character but realistically, these people are just doing their job. So there's not a lot of extra time for the one guy who comes in for two fucking things. Like, yeah, good to see you, thanks. Um, so I didn't really get to be a part of the group. Um, but uh, yeah, it looks like a big machine and it operates. And uh, 
Yeah, it was fun. I was glad to be a part of it. How long would you say you'd have to train in preparation for the new sexy resident role for all the action yeah. before filming actually started? So for training, to, uh, to do any pre-training for, uh, for films, generally we might get a couple of days of rehearsal depending on what the fight scenes or anything the action might be. Um, the reality is, is a lot of productions don't want to take the liability of having their main actor do the stunts. So we have to get a stunt double. And so that sucks for me because I like doing the action. That's what I'm after, but whatever, I get it. Um, so realistically, there's there's not too much because it eats so much of the budget up, right? So they want to keep it to a bare minimum and basically don't hire the guy that can't do the thing, right? So it's, uh, yeah, at most a couple of weeks. You know. Yeah, it would be nice to be like, hey, I need you to gain 15 pounds in six months from now. Doable. But, you know, typically it's okay, we go to camera in two weeks. Like, okay, great, thanks. So, yeah. When I was looking through your IMDb page, I was like remembering the episode you were in in Goosebumps back in the day in the perfect school and of course that year at that time Goosebumps is inescapable it's phenomenon what was it like as a you know as a young man to like be around and be out while this you know what was huge show huge book series everything how did that feel uh Goosebumps was my second job I ever booked um so it was an absolute pleasure to be able to work with the director, Ron Oliver, who is uh, a personality on his own. And it was, it was then that he gave me probably the best advice that an actor, a new actor can get to try and just feel comfortable. Okay, Bruce Lee, he said, be like what? Right, just flow. So that, that was helpful. And it was originally slated to be a single episode. By the time they cut it together, like this could be a two-parter, which is amazing because you grow up, you go to the Scholastic Book Fair, so like I'm buying the next Goosebumps, you're gonna rub the Goosebumps, and you're like, yeah. So I was a big fan of the books as a kid, and you're just like, oh my god, now I get to be a bit of an action hero in the show. Um, the director Ron Oliver would play on a boombox the um, Mission Impossible. <laughs> theme song before we'd start to be long runs and stuff like that so it was uh, it was a hell of a way to get into the industry and it was back when you know budgets were bigger and it just yeah it seemed like a whole different world and it was it was a great way to to get introduced into the business we shot our, our production office was the old Molson Canadian building down on like waterfront down by the waterfront anyway which has now turned into condos or been tore down or whatever but Basically, there were holes in the factory flooring. There's like boards over it. It's all dilapidated. You're like, we make TV shows in, in buildings like this? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay, great. Um, yeah, it, it, was, uh, it was nice because I was still living in Stratford as a kid. And to come into the big city and shoot a TV show, it was, yeah, it was amazing. It was amazing. In the movie X-Men, Rogue actually gets to whiten her hair from touching Magneto. Now, you were her first kiss in that movie. Did she, did she steal some of your good looks? Ooh, nice. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Uh, yeah, I was so disappointed in... Because uh, I, I am to understand that apparently in the storyline, I was supposed to get some sort of a superhero and then become one of the characters, or at least that, in, that instance is supposed to then spawn me having superhero powers, but A, that never happened. And B, because I was in the first X-Men, you can't come into any other X-Men's ever again. You're just like, huh? But it was such a small role, and it just, uh, but it was, it was fucking so cool. You know, to be a kid and to be brought in and be like, okay, look at all the sets that we have. And you're like, oh, it was so huge. It was back when budgets were big, and you're just like, this is insane. So it was, uh, it was again, uh, it was blessed to be a part of that. What do you find more gratifying? Running a corporation that's in control of annihilating mankind or fixing broken single woman one person at a time. <laughs> <laughs> nice, nice. Wow, yeah, so that's so um, You know, I feel like it's almost a lost cause doing the repairing of the, uh, the broken women. No, I, um, <laughs> you're not wrong. <laughs> you know, what are we doing here? Another movie? It's been a week. Oh my God. Uh, no, I mean, hey, sitting at. Uh, Sitting at the boardroom table with all the, the set the way it is, I mean, it's so cool. And, and you know, it's, I'm wearing an Armani suit, it's so nice, oh, it's a fantasy. So it was, it was yeah, it's, 
nothing beats that. It's, yeah. The rest of them were kind of like jobs, but that was a blessing. So, cool. Do you have a specific audition technique or process when you first get the sides and you work through them, or has it just become a... Yeah, I guess you kind of develop a habit. Um, it, okay, so after doing it for this long, basically what's happened is my memory is about fucking 10 minutes. So, yeah, yeah, okay, got it. And then you ask me the one I'm not going to be able to tell you, which is unfortunate because a lot of times you meet people and you're like, hey, yeah, I'm sorry, my brain doesn't work that way. Um, but, uh, yeah, I mean, you read it once, you watch the movie inside your head, and then you just try and memorize those conversations. Um, yeah, I, I don't know, I'm still trying to figure it out, to be honest with you. Best and worst meals you've had on set. <laughs> <laughs> okay, best meals. Okay, so back in like the early 2000s, like surf and turf on a Friday, we got lobster, we got steaks, it was amazing. But we don't have budgets like that anymore, so we get like sandwiches. Um, I learned long ago that basically, okay, so before this whole COVID thing started, uh, it would be 60 to 90 people walking through a buffet to get their food. I don't know what 60 or 80 people have fucking done with their hands. So I learned a long time ago, it was like, listen, the last thing you can do is be sitting there in front of 60 or 80 people and be like, oh, can we pause? I gotta go 10-1, which is code for go to the bathroom. Um, yeah, so I basically learned don't set food. So I, I just don't eat anything on set. I bring my own stuff. I'm like, okay, I can control it that way. In your role, one of your moments became kind of, I think out of the whole film series, became one of the most visually iconic because it's kind of a shot for shot of the game, of that infamous Wesker glasses throw. One, how's that feeling getting that in the can? And two, can you do the throw? <laughs> I'm going to upset you. They didn't actually want me throwing the glasses, okay? <laughs> we only have two sets of these glasses. You can't just throw them. Okay, fine. Um, you know, funny enough, it was when I got to see the trailer for the movie, and I think we had uh, Thunderstruck playing in the original trailers, and I was like, that's when I realized, I was like, yeah, fucking arrived. That's what I've always wanted, to have a movie with a decent soundtrack like that, and uh, so, yeah, I mean, that's, that's when it, you really feel, you're like, all right, sweet. But, you know, you, you get one opportunity like that, you want another one, you know? So I'm, I'm waiting for my next chance. Yeah. It was really cool to... Finally, big budget films like that, at least you have a storyboard and you get visuals of what you're doing. Sometimes on lower budget films, you're like, oh, we're going to do this thing. And you're like, I don't know what this thing is. And you can't, like, you're trying to describe it to me. I don't know what we're doing unless you have a visual. And that's why the video game was so great. You're like, oh, that's what we're doing? Fucking sick, you know? Um, and the rest of the time, we're like, I don't know. We'll see how it turns out. What am I doing? But, yeah. It was, uh, it was fun. One thing that seems to come with a lot of higher budgets and stuff these days seems to be a lot of CG. As viewers, it's one thing. I mean, it's kind of a mixed bag. But for you as an actor, what do you, how does that affect the way that you work out? I've been fortunate enough that I haven't had to sit in front of a giant green screen and pretend that the world exists behind me or around me. Um, in the couple of the, the sets that we had for Resident Evil, at least half of the set is actual built right in front of you, so you have something to work off of. I don't know how to fucking do it. You know, with the cartoon movies or any of the other things, you're just like, there's nothing there, and you're hoping that, yeah, this is going to play, but... Um, yeah, luckily, luckily enough, um, other than, I think, a couple of uh, visual dots and stuff on, on you know, to represent uh, injuries or stuff like that, there wasn't too much of a challenge having to deal with green screen. It just sort of, it fades away, you know, you don't see it, and just dealing with the other person, it'll all be there. But it's cool once it's actually been painted in, you're like, holy shit, it looks huge, you know, versus shooting in this tiny little room. But... I get it. I mean, I grew up watching real action happen, real explosions, and now it's all pretend, and you're just like, it's not the same, but we do it pretend this way so we can spend the money somewhere else, right? And, uh, it, yeah, I don't know. We'll find, yeah. You, you're so personable and engaging. Um, 
when you have to play uh, a villain, do you have to isolate yourself from the, or remove yourself, I guess, from, from, from the other cast socially to try and maintain that? I'm glad you brought that up because a lot of times, you know, for example, working with uh, with Paige on Degrassi and having that rape scene, it's, it's a heavy weighted situation. And it's challenging because a lot of actors, I don't know, they're better than me and they can talk about lunch from last week and be sitting there rolling, okay, and then they turn it on and that's fine, but I like to at least vibe with it and feel it so it's not, I'm not just wearing it here, I'm feeling it in my gut. And the, I know that sounds so stupid, but... Um, so yeah, I, I'm not a chatty Kathy on set. I'm here to do the job. We can be friends after, but right now we have a lot of people standing around focusing on this one gig. Let's get this, let's nail it, and we can talk about the bullshit later. Um, so I don't know if I become a little standoffish because I'm like, I need to be over here. I need to know what I'm saying. I need to know what I'm doing. And I'm just I'm not here to make friends, which, you know, it'd be nice to make friends, but the, the challenge is I want to do the job well because that's, you know, that's what lasts. So it's, uh, yeah, so you, uh, you know, make your own space. And it's, uh, it's a challenge because a lot of times you see other actors and they're sitting there and they're talking with the director and they're friends with everybody. And like, I can't do that. And you might get more jobs than me because, oh, he's so personable, but that's fine. Whatever. I have a process. It works for me. I'm going to stick with it. Thank you. Any advice to someone who wants to enter into the world of film or television? Well, my advice is just find, find somebody who's already doing it. Um, start volunteering your time, learn the ropes. And that's one of the biggest challenges that I've found over the last decade or so in the business is that we've, we've gotten away from training the next generation. So we have department heads that are doing things. They don't have the time or the budget to be like, oh, hi, you're new. You don't understand that you're not supposed to just walk into an actor's room without knocking on the door. Yeah. A number of different things. I know that's a stupid example, but the idea is that it used to be, if you're in television and film, you're doing this for your entire life. And this is what you live for. Like everything else, it seems, we got a lot of temporary people, temporary people in construction, temporary people over here. So the quality begins to drop off. Um, so, yeah, if you're going to get into it, learn the ropes and, and pay attention. I shouldn't hear your voice. You should be watching and learning. Um, you know. And, and, and this is the thing, is you want to volunteer? There's lots of shows out there that'll be happy to take you on. And if you don't have any experience, that's the only way you're gonna do it. That's right. Right? I mean, very rarely does somebody with no experience get given the opportunity to be in a film, or do a film. So, volunteer your time. If you're passionate about it, then that's all that matters. Chase your dreams, you only get one shot at it. Who would you say was the best person you've ever acted with? Who would you say was the worst person you've ever acted with? <laughs> Okay, Mila's great. Um, I'll give you an example. So I got a supermodel here. She's on the ground, and the camera's positioned in a way that, okay, fine, you're supposed to take a hit. She's like, no, actually kick me in the ribs. I'm like, are you kidding me? I'm going to kick you in the ribs. No, no, no. It's better for you. It's better for me. It's like, oh, my God. Okay, sorry. So I booted Mila in the ribs, right? So it was like, holy fuck. Um, there's a lot of examples of people with great success and they don't they don't really have the ego, right? They already know they're fucking great. They're rich. What do they care? I can just be nice, right? I have nothing to prove. So, you know, even for example, working with Mel Gibson. So we have a whole fight scene and it's tired, it's a long day, and guess who point? He's like, okay, so we're gonna do this one. I'm like, yeah, we're gonna do this one. He's gonna bring it, I'm gonna bring it. Okay, let's do it. So we get in and we start doing it. And next thing you know, I catch him with a punch to the face. And he's just like, he pauses. Like, All right, cut. Like, oh, fuck. I just punched Bill Gibson in the face. This is it. This is it. I'm going to be so fired. And he's just like, ah, don't worry about it. I need a bag of ice. And he goes out and has to smoke. I'm like, oh, well, fuck. All right, good. Because, you know, you get so nervous. You're like, it's all for pretend. But you actually hit somebody. It's terrible. It's like, okay, another example is I got to work with Michael Bisping. Um, in Triple X, and this was just before he won the heavyweight title, and there's a scene where I slap him in the face with a book, or at least that's what it would look like. But of course, him being an MMA fighter, he's like, no, 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 slap me in the face. Like, my, we do this just for pretending. He goes, no, 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 let's do it. 
Like, so doing things like that and getting away with it, you're like, oh, sweet. Um, so it's, you know, and then the, the bad actors, the bad apples, they're forgettable, you know, because who can be bothered to remember some asshole? And you're just like, no, eh, whatever. That was your own deal. Um, and again, like I said, for the most part, I'm trying to do my own job as best as I can, so I can't be bothered with whatever else is going on, right? Um, yeah, no, I can't, you know, and even if I did, if there was something really bad, I probably shouldn't say it in public anyway, so, yeah, I can't, I can't remember. Did they hit so, you back? No, I offered it, too, I was like, yeah, it makes it feel better. But, uh, funny enough, when you do do it with stunt doubles, they'll hit you back. Something you like to do in your spare time that has nothing to do with your career. I smoke a lot of weed. <laughs> um, you know, I, listen, I don't do anything else, right? So I've dedicated my life to this in hopes that it would work out. Some days it does, some days it doesn't. Um, so everything else I do is kind of plays into it. Like, okay, what else do I do? I go to the gym, you know, and I love that. And that's, you know, that's what's most important. So the entire day is basically geared around me going to the gym for two hours. And then the rest of the time, I'm just uncomfortable and sore and just fucking just barely getting through it. Um, you know, I like to dirt bike. I like riding horses. I like long walks on the beach. Oh, <laughs> there you go. Uh, you know, that's it. Uh, I like nature. I like to go hunting. Um, yeah, I tend to be out there versus, you know, in downtown Toronto or stuff like that. It's just too chaotic and busy and, you know, like silence. Back to Wesker, now that that era of the films is over, is there anything about the character that you personally would have liked to do that didn't make it into the age of the film? That's a good question. I wish that I would have had more action. You know, and that's, it's just, Ian Glenn's great, love him to bits. But, like, why are we going to keep putting these six-year-old dudes doing all the action when, like, I'm made for action? So, fingers crossed that in the future I'll be six years old and then they'll hire me to do the action movies. Um, so, yeah, it was just, you know, I would have liked a better death. You know, yeah. so, eh, but that's just me being picky. This is your time to let people know what you've done here. Yeah, so we, uh, we finished our film uh, at the start of October this past fall. It's called Last of the Night. And um, yeah, so fingers crossed. I just heard that we have the picture. The cut is finalized. Now we're doing some of the, uh, the post-production. I should have some ADR to do in a few weeks. And then, uh, yeah, I think we're looking at, uh, fingers crossed, maybe a TIFF uh, reveal. Um, you know, it's, uh, it's nice to see at least some more cities other than Toronto and Hamilton getting some films made in them, you know? Yeah, and it's, exactly. it's cool because there's a lot of really neat old buildings here that you can fucking use. There's a lot of value and there's a lot of talent in this town. So let's, let's keep it going. Um, yeah, it was really nice. We, uh, we filmed uh, out that direction. Um, Strathroy, thank you. I was just like, oh, man. Um, so we've been around, um, and yeah, I, uh, I'm excited to see what, uh, how this leads into more work for Southern Ontario. Yeah. Very Fingers important. crossed. This is what we're looking for, for sure. It's doable, right? Oh, and it's absolutely. just, you got to get some people that are willing to take the risk. In film, it's always risky. Um, and, but why not? You know what? So it's just regular investing. You're absolutely right. Ah, uh, you, lady with the purple hair. Oh, yes. Can you give a brief description of your role in Last of the Night? Oh, good question. Thank you. Thanks, Corey. <laughs> Last of the Night, I, uh, I play an amateur um, wrestler who has been given the task of babysitting for my uh, girlfriend while she writes exams. Um, over the course of the night, uh, it seems that I have someone invited guests come in while I try and protect this young girl from a... Uh, a cult wanting to bring over demons from the other side. So as you can imagine, there's some chaos that ensues. And if you saw any of the foot or the at least the picture, you might think that it's a bloody mess. And you know, that was the point. Basically, we got in a lot of trouble with how much blood we used. But yeah, you know, it's uh it's fun. Yeah, yeah. What do you mean there's gonna be blood in a horror movie? Yeah, everywhere.
ceiling everywhere. They were surprised. Thank you so much for your time. Hey, thank you guys and everybody for showing up and making this one wild. It's amazing. Thank you.